This is my role. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because <laughs> that looks fantastic. Girls, let's go. Let's do it. Boys, let's do it. Take out a coin, any coin. 5p, 2p, 10p, pound, doesn't matter. No coin. Take the ruler, then. Teacher of the Year Dan Walton take each, take has earned a reputation for turning the dullest right? maths topic into an exciting no journey of discovery. In a moment, going to throw your coin in the air or you're going to throw the ruler in the air. Go! But how will he teach the perennial challenge of Pythagoras to his top set Year 8 class? John Bailey, a former maths teacher himself, has come to find out. I want to give you a little problem to do, but I wanted it to be 50-50. First up, Dan randomly divides the class into two groups to solve a problem from different angles. Right, if you've got a head, I'd like you to draw that triangle and then after you've drawn it, I would like you to measure the length of the side that I've put the yellow question mark next to. If you landed on tails, you're not drawing a, a triangle if you, if you landed on a tail. I'm going to go for a plus, I think. And I think I'll go for a times. And I think I'll put an equals in there. And I think I'll also put in one of those. Your challenge. I'm looking for an answer of 10. An answer of 10. I'm going to give you a minute. On your marks, get set, go. I'm get used to going to lessons and people put up the objectives on the board and then children write them down and then the teacher starts teaching. But in here, something else goes on. What's happening at the beginning of the lesson here? I'm trying to engage the kids as quickly as possible, so get their attention and get them interested as soon as I can. And, and I have this thing that I don't necessarily think sharing the objectives for the lesson is, is the best way to do that. So, for example, this was a lesson on Pythagoras. If I can somehow get them to discover a concept themselves, then that, I, I think that aids the lesson greatly and, and aids their understanding. Turn over the piece of paper for me. Fantastic. Right. Let's just go away from that for a moment. We'll come back to it in a little while. If I was to ask for a sport, what... what then sport Dan changes the subject to golf. Distances. And if you look at the picture of a golf hole behind me, where am I trying to get the ball to? Megan? Yeah, I'm trying to get the ball right up here and there'd be a little hole on this nice grass. I'm hitting the ball and I've got to get it in the hole. But what, is that it? What's the, what's sort of the point of it? It's par five and you've got to get it in five hits. If you're a good golfer, you're supposed to do that hole in five shots. But I would argue, is that the name of the game? What am I trying to do when I'm playing this golf? Louise? You try and get less than five. Which perfect answer. You're trying to do it as quickly as possible, with as few shots as possible. I'm trying to incorporate something from the real world into every lesson. I know I, I want to teach Pythagoras. I know that I want to do it by showing them a golf hole, that dog legs one way. And I know I want the kids to see that you can hit the ball a certain distance that way and then a certain distance that way and get to the green the conventional way. Or, obviously, you don't need to know anything about golf or Pythagoras to see that there's a direct route. Look at the picture behind me. Anything strike you? I've got to get the ball up to that green. If I want to win a tournament here, Phil. If you try and hit it a different way, it might take only one. Let's get there straight away. I'm going to give you 20 seconds again in your pairs to work out what my... Have I got a problem or not, Al? I want to hit the button. Have a chat about it. Come on, have a chat. You need to hard one to hit. Right, He's got the weeks. Yeah, it goes under arm. What are you encouraging there? I'm trying to actually get them to do some of the work rather than me just tell them what the problem is or tell them how to solve the problem. So um, I'm trying to get them to take some take some ownership, really, and, and to, to actually, you know, to actually think for themselves. I'm going to hit the ball there in one, win the money, go on holiday. 
My problem is I don't know how far it is. And if I did, I could hit it there in one. How on earth am I going to work out the length of that line? You need to turn your purple piece of paper over now and look at what we did at the start of the lesson. Give me some answers for the length of the triangle. Put your hands up, come on, there should be loads. Yes. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. You're doing something with a three, four, five triangle. Yeah. Uh, but they don't know about that yet. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about that. By getting half the class or, or whatever fraction it was to draw the triangle and get the answer of 10, obviously the whole class will appreciate that if we use the Pythagoras later on and get the answer of 10, that the method works. Um, getting the kids to play with numbers, I'm trying to get the kids to, to discover themselves, you've got to square each number, add them and, and square root at the end, rather than me having to stand at the front and say, hey, try this. So it, 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 was, it was sort of a, a hopeful gambit, really. Did anyone manage to get a 10 from these? <coughs> I'm impressed. We've got three people. Fantastic. A gamble has paid off. What's your guess about how many people in the room understand the numerical method? Certainly those three. However, there's also a significant number of kids out there that will be itching because they know there's a numeric method, but they've not had the opportunity to discover it yet because yeah. they were drawing a triangle. Yeah. So it sort of adds to the anticipation. It adds to their eagerness to actually be able to do it numerically. One of those three people, can you tell me how you managed to get to an answer of 10? Um, Claire? I did 8 times 8 is 64, 6 times 6, which is 36. I added them both together and then I square rooted them. Look at the board, people, and look at what she did. I take one of the numbers and I times it by itself, or I square it, whatever you want to call it. I take the other number on the triangle and I do exactly the same thing. Back to Claire. And then I added them 36 to 64. Add the two answers, comes to 100. And then I square root it. And then I square root it on my calculator, and it's come to a 10, which is exactly the same answer as everybody who landed on the head got by drawing the triangle. I would like you, in pairs, to get the answer for this, please. Uh, you can do it however you like. I leave the decision to you. I'm only going to give you a minute and a half. 90 seconds, go. It's quite important I get them back into pairs, I feel, and hopefully give them a couple of chances. Say, hold on a minute, this is taking ages to draw it. It's, it's trying to get more kits now to, to be using Pythagoras. And it's giving, you, it's giving the knowledge a bit more time to spread and it's giving you a chance to assess how it's spreading. Yeah, and it, the, in, as far as those kids know, they are calculating an answer so I can go off and win a golf competition. That's the concept. 138 point. Nine, two, we'll put it as a number. Hands up if you drew it. Who drew it out, measured the sides. So we've all done it this new way. Bingo, they've all calculated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. They've got it without you've got, me, yeah. You've got a room full of people now who know there's a calculating yeah, and method. it's better, more effective, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. Yeah. Here we go. I do 12 times 12, 3 times 3, add the answer square root, finished. Who can go quicker than that? Abjit, number five. Seven times seven, eight times eight. Add, add them together, square root. Perfect. Hey, you're going to choose one for the person next to you, and they have to machine gun it back. <laughs> make sure they say to add. Make sure they say to square root. Go. Uh, seven times seven, eight times eight. Add them together, uh, square root. I'm afraid. You machine gun them through the method rather than the answers. It's brilliant because it nails the method without having to confuse yourself with getting the right answer. It gives them the chance to assess each other and assess themselves within a 60 second time period that they have understood everything in the lesson so far. I would like you to decide without writing anything down which one on the board in your pairs is the odd one out, okay? 
go for it. That one everyone else has got a number on that side. Yeah, but that's got the right angle. Yeah, but that one doesn't have one at the bottom. Any brave pair going to talk me through it? Hannah. It's missing. Like, this, there's one that goes like that. I agree it's the one in the bottom right-hand corner. Do, do we agree, people? Yeah. yeah. This one, everyone in the room would get right. This one is the same question. You'd get the same answer. It looks different because I didn't draw it to scale. This one, the same thing. This one is different. If you did three times three, four times four, added them and square rooted, you would not get the right answer. Obviously, I've got to get to the stage where they can spot that sometimes they're finding one of the shorter sides. And hence, the method they've used so far wouldn't work. You've given them more language yeah. to understand the triangles. Yeah. They, 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 even though they haven't got a name for it yet, they, yeah. they know what the hypotenuse is and they know where to look for it. Mm. Turn over the yellow piece of paper and see if you can work out yourself what I would need to do on the bottom right question. Yeah. Why it says minus, because you're finding a different side than what I've got. Because it finds the length of the short side, not the longer side. Finding the length of the hypotenuse. The concept is assessing whether they've got the skills to access a piece of formal mathematics, if you like, and can they look at this as a pair, maybe, and then use that knowledge, adapt it into, into this question here. OK, time. Poppy, speak to me. Times the bigger number first, and then do the smaller number. And then take the smaller number away from the big one, and then square root it. Do we agree? Yeah. yeah. It's a perfect answer. Remember. You, chew, you do it wrong in a golf context, you're taking the wrong club, the ball's in the river. If you want to do it accurately, you've got to be absolutely 100% sure. Are you finding one of these or are you finding one of these? Well, that's the second main kind of cognitive turning point we of the lesson. I've got Pythagoras and I can, I can now, I've got some more formal language and I can manipulate it in two different ways. Yeah. What, what's going to happen next? Um, next would be... Um, the sort of major killer activity, if you like. You're going to have to solve a murder for me now. You have to tell me who did it, the name of the person, the weapon, and the room. Dan it's sets nine simple. Pythagoras questions of increasing difficulty. The, the answers three. form an anagram, and the anagram the will solve one. the murder. It's a chance for them to consolidate their knowledge but in a more exciting way and to actually have a go at something more challenging. It's like a reward for them, really. Three of your questions are hidden around the school. A certain grid reference. I'm not teaching it. On your marks, get set, go. <laughs> Answer the questions. Murderer, room, weapon. Go. You've got three minutes. The students text in their answers. Three, two, one. Time. That's it. Hands on your head. What do you think? I am hoping you have learned this lesson. Uh, Makinda. Pythagoras. You're close. You are very close. Onka. Ways of Pythagoras. Boiling. Boiling. Get the sun cream on. <laughs> I like that, actually. But if I said to him to learn both ways of Pythagoras, he might not know what both ways are. We might not get any closer yet to learn the adding and subtracting of Pythagoras. If you can leave this room and know how to do that, and know how to do that, you have had a successful lesson. These children have had a really successful lesson yeah. because they've told you what the objectives of the lesson were. Yeah. They told you in their own words. Yeah. And you might have wanted something about calculating the length of a side, but Pythagoras by... Um, the method of addition and subtraction yeah. is great, and it's especially yeah. great because they're the ones who said it. There it is, Plumhall Rope, Han and Emma. <laughs> Applause. <laughs> They'll understand, but probably uh, remember it only for the short term. <laughs>
And finally, prize time. Yes! Right, a handshake and a Mars bar and a... I'm trying to get them to, to come up with their own little method or their own way of remembering it or, or with some form of deep understanding. That, that's my aim. Oh, thank shake, you. Right, job done. That was good, wasn't right. it? Right, tie off.